Hey class, good evening everyone and welcome to another session and today we are going to discuss arithmetic progression in one shot. Okay, so with this session all the important questions of your arithmetic progressions will be over. So let us start the session without wasting any more time because I know you also do not have any time and I don't want to waste any of your time. Let us start the session with the very basics of AP. First thing, what is an arithmetic progression? Arithmetic progression is a sequence. That means the numbers are arranged in a particular order. What is the rule for the particular order? The particular order, the rule is the difference of any two successive members or the consecutive members is a constant. Difference has to be constant in the arithmetic progression. As a, for example, 5 minus 1. Now always remember, you take the difference from the second term to the first term. Okay, the later term to the previous term. Okay, 5 minus 1, 4, 9 minus 5, 4, 13 minus 9, 4 and so on. Here also 2 minus 1, 1, 3 minus 2, 1, 4 minus 3, 1 and so on. So both are the example of AP. Common difference of an AP, always remember as I have told you, either it will be A2 minus A1 or A3 minus A2 or A4 minus A3. So the term minus the previous term, you cannot do, do the opposite A3 minus A4, no. A4 minus A3. A3 minus A2. Previous term you have to subtract. So I can say that sir for the common difference there is going to be a very easy formula. Common difference is going to be A n nth term minus the previous term which is n minus 1. A n minus 1. So this is going to be the formula for the common difference. If n is equal to 5. A5 minus 5 minus 1 4. A5 minus A4. Like that. Now the general term of an AP. This A n. What is the formula for this general term of an AP? Always remember the general term of an AP formula is a plus n minus 1 into d. This is one important formula. A plus n minus 1 into d. For example, if I tell you what is a4, so it will be a plus 4 minus 1, 3d. Got it? So this is your general term formula for any AP. Then comes the next part which is the sum of an AP. Sum of an AP, if you add all of them, so first thing, general term formula I have told you a plus n minus 1 into d. Sum of the terms formula is n by 2 into 2 times of a plus n minus 1 into d, also n by 2 into a plus l, where l stands for the last term. Both the formulas are there, you can solve any formula. Okay, so some of the first n terms will be n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d, or n by 2 into a plus l, where l is the last term, a is the first term, and d is the common difference. Okay, this is all mota moti, this is the theory of this arithmetic progression. Let us solve some questions. The nth term of an AP. How do you write the nth term of an AP out of all this? So we know, but I always remember, for any question of an AP, any question of AP, you have to understand one thing which is very important. Your A, first term and common difference. If these two things are known, you can get anything what you want in that question. First term here, we know is 5. Common difference will be, remember, A2 minus A1 which is 2 minus 5 which is minus 3. Always remember if the AP is decreasing you can see 5, 2, minus 1, minus 4, minus 7. If the AP is decreasing the common difference will be negative. If the AP is increasing the common difference will be positive. So when you look at the AP you should have this idea whether the common difference is be po will be positive or negative. I can very well say it is going to be negative. Now the general term formula A n is equal to A plus n minus 1 into D which means A is 5 plus n minus 1 into D is minus 3. So you will get 5. Now minus 3 into n is minus 3 n. Minus 3 into minus 1 is plus 3. So you will get 8 minus 3 n. So the general term of this AP will be 8 minus 3 n which means your option C is going to be your correct answer. Option C will be your correct answer. Let's move to the next question. The next question is this. The sum of all two digit odd numbers is what is the sum of all two digit odd numbers? So again, if you will see all the two digits odd number, if you will write, it will be first two digit odd numbers. So the, the smallest two digit odd number is 11, then comes 13, then comes 15, then comes 17 up to the last two digit odd number will be 99. You want to find out the sum of all these numbers? So first you need to know that how many terms will be there. How many terms are there? So I can say sir, my first term is 11 and my common difference is 13 minus 11 which is equal to 2. I know my first term, 
I know my common difference. I know this is the last term, a n, last term. Okay, this is the last term. So if I know how many, if I know what is the value of n for this, I will say how many terms are here. So I can say, sir, I know a n is equal to 99 and a n is equal to a plus n minus 1 into d which is equal to 99. A is equal to 11 plus n minus 1 into d is equal to 2 is equal to 99. Shift 11 there, you will be getting n minus 1 into 2 is equal to 88. So n minus 1 will be 88. 2 will go in division which is equal to 44. So n is equal to 44 plus 1 which is 45. So there are total 45 terms. There are total 45 terms. Now I want the sum Sn is equal to n by 2 into a plus L. Why I am using this formula? Because I already know the last term is 99. So sum will be equal to 45 by 2 into 11 plus 99. So you will be getting 45 by 2 into 110. This will be 55. 45 into 55, whatever will be the answer, that is going to be your solution. So 45 into 55, the correct answer is going to be 2475. Okay, so this is how you are going to solve. 45 into 55 is 2475. Right? Let's move to the next part. Three numbers in an AP have sum as 24. What is the middle term? What is the middle term? So, beta, whenever these three terms questions are coming, okay, you can say that let's say sir, the first term is A minus B. Let's say first term is A minus B, second term is A, and third term is A plus B. Again, this is an AP only. Right, this is a AP, but to make my calculations easier, I have changed it in the form of A minus B, A and A plus B. This is an AP. Now that sum is given as 24. So you can say A minus B plus A plus A plus B is given as 24. Minus D plus D got cancelled. 3A is equal to 24. So A is equal to 24 by 3, which means 8. So the middle term, the middle term is going to be the middle term is going to be 8, right? This is how we can solve this question. Let's move to the next part. The next part is this. Which of the, which term of this AP will be 0? Which term of this AP will be 0? That means, we know at some place we will get 0. Let's say, we know that at some place we will get the term as 0. So, at which place? By first term, A1 is 21, A2 is 18, a3 is 15. Now, which place we will get 0? We don't know. Let's say a n. nth term will be equal to 0. Let's say nth term will be equal to 0. Where I have to find out the value of n. I know my first term is 21 and my common difference is 18 minus 21 which is minus 3. Again, you can see common difference is negative. The AP is decreasing. Got it? So, I can say a n formula is a plus n minus 1 into d is equal to 0. A first term is 21 plus n minus 1 into d. Common difference is what? Minus 3 is equal to 0. So shift this 21 there. So n minus 1 into minus 3 is equal to minus 21. Shift minus 3 in division. n minus 1 is minus 21 upon minus 3 which is equal to what? 7. So n minus 1 is equal to 7 that means n is equal to 8. So the eighth term, the eighth term will be equal to zero. Eighth term will be equal to zero. Okay, is it clear? So this is how this question can be solved. Got it? Eighth term for this AP will be zero. Let's move to the next question. Next question is this. If 10 times the 10th term of an AP is equal to 15 times the 15th term, okay, show that 25th term of this AP will be zero. Now, they have not given the first term and the common difference. So, we will assume, let's say, sir, the first term is A and the common difference is D. Okay, these are generally the notations given for the first term and the common difference. They are saying 10 times of the 10th term, that means 10 times of A10 is equal to 15 times the 15th term. So, 15 times of A15. Is it clear? Right? So, now write the formula by A10. Using the formula, a n is equal to a plus n minus 1 into d. If you put n is equal to 10, you will get 10 into. If I put n is equal to 10, I will get a plus 10 minus 1 is 9d is equal to 15 times of 
put n is equal to 15, a plus 15 minus 1, 14b. Right? Let's do the multiplication here. So you can do the simplification here. This is 2s are, 5 2s are, this is 5 3s are. Okay. You can do the multiplication here, 5 2s are, 5 3s are. Okay. Mm. Will it help? Hmm. Help ho jaya. <coughs> so you can say 2a plus 18d is equal to 3a is 42d. Okay, shift A here, 42 there, so you'll be getting 18D minus 42D is equal to 3A minus 2A. So you'll be getting A is equal to negative of, negative of minus 24D. A is equal to what? Negative of 24D. Now they are saying, show that 25th term of this AP is 0. 25th term of this AP will be A plus 25 minus 1, 24D. The value of A we know is equal to A can be written as minus 24D. So minus 24D plus 24D you can see will be equal to 0. So A25 will be equal to 0. So you can very well see that without even finding the value, actual value of A and D, we just got a relation between them and we have solved the answer. So wherever you are solving these questions, just don't focus. Every time you will not be getting the values of A and D. Sometimes the questions are in such a way that for any value of A and D, if it is following, it will be correct. So here you can see, I don't know what is the AP, but I have proved it, it is going to be correct. So solve the question, whatever the question is telling you, just keep doing that. They told me 10th term of an AP, multiplied by 10 is equal to 15th term of an AP, multiplied by 15. I solved it, I got this. Then it told me, if I prove that 25th term is 0. I didn't have anything else, so I saw, chalo, let us see what is A25 term. I saw A plus 24D and then I saw it automatically got 0. Got it? Let's move to the next question now. Next question is this. In an AP, the sum of first 10 terms is minus 150 and the sum of its next 10 terms is minus 550. Find the AP. Now, it's a very good question. It's a very good question. Sum of 10 terms is minus 150. Let's understand. S10. When I write S10, it means that you are adding A1 plus A2 up to A10. Up to a10 you are adding. Huh? Right? So S10, the formula we know is equal to n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d. Huh? We know this thing. So S10 will be equal to 10 by 2 into 2 times of a plus 10 minus 1 into d. 10 minus 1 is what? 90. I have used the formula for sum. Sum of 10 terms is given as minus 150, so I can say minus 150 is equal to 10 by 2 is 5 times of 2a plus 9d, shift 5 there in division, so you will get minus 30 is equal to 2a plus 9d. Now you can see this is a linear equation in two variables where my variables are a and d. Let's come for the next part. Read the question properly. The sum of its next 10 terms, sum of its next 10 terms. That means after the first 10 terms, what are the next 10 terms? After A10, you will get A11, then you will get A12, A13. So this way they are seeing some of the next 10 terms. That means A11 plus A12 plus A13. Okay, up to A20. These are the next 10 terms. These are the next 10 terms. They are saying this sum is equal to minus of 550. This sum is equal to what? Minus of 550. Um, how do you get this part? Right? If it is suppose, if it was a1 plus a2 plus a3 up to a20, I will say it is the sum of 20 terms. Okay, I cannot say this is the sum of 10 terms. No, sum of 10 terms means what? a1 plus a2 up to a10. So what I understood is, sir, if I have suppose a1 plus a2 up to a20, from that, if I subtract a1 plus a2 up to a10, then definitely I am going to get this part only a11 plus a12. Anna? This part only I will get. So I will say it is equal to minus 550. Again understand. Deko beta, what is happening? I am saying the sum of 20 terms. If the from the sum of first 20 terms, if I subtract the sum of first 10 terms, I will be remaining. See here it is a1. After opening the bracket, it will become minus a1. So a1 and minus a1 will get cancelled. a2 and minus a2 will get cancelled up to a10. All the values will get cancelled and here also a10 will be get cancelled. 
So we are remaining at A11, A12, A13 up to A20, which is the given part. Okay, so this is what sum of 20 terms. Sum of 20 terms minus sum of the first 10 terms. Wherever we write now S10, Sn. Remember, beta, Sn means sum of first n terms. Remember this thing very carefully. Sum of first n terms. That means starting from A1 up to An. You cannot start anywhere in the middle. So now, S20 minus S10. S20, according to the formula, will be equal to 20 by 2 into 2a plus 20 minus 1, which is 19d, minus S10. By sum of 10 terms, we know now. What is sum of 10 terms? Minus 150. Okay? Is equal to minus 550. So you are going to get 10 times of 2a plus 19d. Okay? Minus into minus is plus 150. If I shift plus 150 there, it will become minus 150. Hey, na? By minus into minus is plus 150. Shift it there, it will become minus 150. So minus 550 minus 150. So you will be getting, you will be getting what? I am writing this part here. 10 times of 2a plus 19d is equal to, here it will be equal to what? Minus 550 is minus 700. So you have got 2a plus 19d. This 10 will go there in division, so it will become minus 70. This is your second linear equation in two variables. You have got your two equations, two linear equations in two variables. One is 2a plus 9d is equal to minus 30 and the other you have got is 2a plus 19d is equal to minus 70. Okay, beta? Both these equations you have got. This part is very important. How I have got a11 plus a12 up to a20. How I have got the sum of next 10 terms? I will say that sir, from the sum of first 20 terms, sum of first 20 terms, subtract the sum of first 10 terms. So from A11, A2, so A2, A1, A2, A3 up to A20 if I add. From that if I subtract A1, A2, A3 up to A10, then the first 10 terms will be subtracted. So I will be left with A11, A12, A13 up to A20. So I have got this second equation which is 2A plus 90 is equal to minus 70. Okay, now I will solve these two pair of linear equations in two variables, as simple as that. So, if you do one thing, if you add them, or if you subtract them, then also it will be working, na? Subtract kello. If you subtract them, minus will become plus, minus, minus. This got cancelled, you are left with minus 70 plus 30 is minus 40, is equal to 19d minus 90, which is equal to 10d. So, you have got d is equal to minus 4. If d is equal to minus 4, put it in any of the equation. Let us say you put it in the first equation. 2a plus 9 into minus 4 is equal to minus 30. So you have got 2a minus 36 is equal to minus 30. Minus 36 shifted there will become plus 36, which is 36 minus 36. So a is equal to 6 by 2, which is equal to 3. Now, you know a, which is the first term. You know d, which is the common difference. You can easily tell the ap will be 3. Then... 3 add minus 4 in 3. 3 minus 4 will be minus 1. Add minus 4 in minus 1, minus 5. Add minus 4 in minus 5, minus 9. And so on. So this is going to be your AP. 3 minus 1, minus 5, minus 9. And so on. Very important question. Okay? Very important question. Rewatch the video if you want to revise this question one more time. Okay? Now this is how it will be solved. Let's move to the next question. The next, achha, sorry. So this is with this part, beta. We have solved all the questions. Remember the AP. Last question which I have solved is very important. Okay, so this is all mostly mota moti all the important questions there. NCRT may some application based questions are also there. Do not forget to solve those questions as well. Okay, so this is all from my side in today's class. Thank you so much for attending the session. Uh, please kindly like this video, share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel. For any queries, you can reach out to me at my email ID. Thank you so much, beta. This is all from my side in today's class. I'll see you, uh, see you soon in the next class. Bye-bye. Good night. See you soon. Bye-bye.